You're listening to Tim Bulkley's Five Minute Bible. Last time we noticed that Psalm 22 is a typical complaint. It contains lots of complaining and questioning God. From the first verse that Jesus quoted on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Which goes on, Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning, Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Psalm 22 is also typical of biblical complaints, in the feel it gives of a debate or discussion. Sometimes it's internal. After questioning God in verses 1 and 2, as we've just seen, the psalmist reminds himself, Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel, in you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried, and were saved. In you they trusted, and were not put to shame. But immediately returns to say, in verses 6 to 8, But I am a worm, and not human, scorned by others, and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. But then again he reminds himself, in verses 9 and 10, Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe from my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. Since my mother bore me, you have been my God. At which point another typical element is introduced. A plea for God's help to change things. Verse 11. Don't be far from me, for trouble is near and there's no one to help. The complaints then expressed again. And then... When we get to verses 19 to 21, the plea is repeated and reinforced. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, and my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. At which point there is a sudden dramatic change of tone. Different translations make this change, either in the middle of verse 21, like the NRSV does, or perhaps after the verse. Whether the second half of verse 21 is still the plea, Save me from the horns of the wild oxen, or a declaration, From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me, isn't clear. What is clear is that between the start of verse 21, Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help, and the start of 22, the mood has changed dramatically. Suddenly the psalmist is promising to tell God's goodness. The tone of complaint has gone. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation I will praise you. And in verse 23 he is leading the choir in a song of praise, which continues to the end of the psalm. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nation shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord, and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Coo! Stirring stuff. But what happened, in or around verse 21, to produce such a change? The psalm itself gives us no clues whatsoever. In our search for a clue, you'll have to come back and listen to the next instalment when we'll return to Jeremiah for hints as to what's happening. God bless. See you next time.